All right, hello. Um, what I wanna do with this video is really just give you an overview of the steps and techniques I used in Fusion 360 to design this chair, uh, prepare it for manufacturing, and then ultimately um, cut it out on the CNC router. So this isn't gonna be a true step-by-step -step tutorial. This is really just gonna be kind of an overview of the processes. If you wanna see a step-by-step -step tutorial on creating this type of a component, uh, see the link in the description below. But first of all, let's just go ahead and uh, take a look at some of the different aspects of the design of this chair. Now one of the really nice things about using Fusion 360 to do design of furniture like this is the ability to create parameters. So if I come in here <clears throat> and I select Modify Change Parameters, you'll see I have to find a few parameters here. Ply, Tab, uh, S Tab, I call that for short tab, and cutter. Now by creating one of these parameters, so I can always create a new one, say new param, and give it a value of say 0.5. You know, when I do that, when I have these parameters, then I can use them throughout. So you'll see that I've used that in the definition of all of these features. So the thickness of this part is defined by that parameter ply. And now in a second you'll see why that's so important. Okay, so for example, when I draw this, what I like to do is I just draw the tabs, right? So I draw these tabs, and then we use a, I'll use a combine feature to cut them out. So we actually say, okay, I'm going to use these as tools. This will be my target. That's great. And then you do the combine. And then if I were to hide this, for example, you can see that there's pockets in there. So by taking advantage of the parametric nature of Fusion 360, I can say that I want to come back in here. I'm going to change one of these parameters. I'll change ply, for example. So maybe I've measured my stock very specifically to 0.672 last time I made one of these. But this time when I go to run it, I realize my stock this time is 0.725, for example. So now I can just change this one parameter and my whole design is going to update, right? So the depth of these tabs is going to be correct now. The thickness of all the materials is going to be correct. The thickness, the width of this slot is now going to be correct. If I come in here and I was to measure this, you can see now the width of the slot is 0.725. So by being able to just have this one parameter to drive all these different things in the model, you're able to very easily just go in, measure your stock, change that one value, and have everything update all the way downstream down to the tool path and that is a big advantage of using Fusion 360 for something like this. The next thing that you'll want to do is lay everything flat. So to do this I create joints between all of the parts and a piece of stock. So I'll draw in um, a part to represent the sheet that I'm going to cut everything out of and then we create joints and move everything around to lay everything flat. And in the description of this video there's a link to um, another video that shows this process in more detail using a nice little uh, add-in that I wrote. But in general what you want to do is just lay everything flat and get it all arranged on a sheet like this to get it ready for manufacture. After laying everything flat, the next thing you're going to want to do is apply a uh, dog bone fillet. So all this stuff needs to be press fit. Obviously we can't have these sharp corners. So I'm going to create a dog bone fillet using um, this add-in. And just one quick thing to note is I'm using the par a parameter for my cutter diameter as well as since everything's oriented with these edges in the vertical direction I can just simply select the body and it's going to create dog bones on all of the internal corners for me and you'll see the result here. Now I've got dog bones on all of the internal corners of this body and what I would really want to do is then follow up and do that on the rest of these components um, here in my design. So now I've got uh, dog bones applied everywhere. Uh, just to point out, these ones on this, the, uh, the add-in, um, if you want to see more detailed instruction, look in the video notes. You can see a link to a video describing how to use that add-in in more detail. But uh, note that these ones here on this curved surface, these were not able to be generated automatically with that uh, script that Casey wrote. So you have to actually, uh, I, these are all just hand drawn in actually. So it's really just drawing circles um, and getting things exactly the way that you want for all of these tabs. So that add-in only works when you have two uh, straight edges, so just be aware of that. So we'll go ahead and jump over into the CAM workspace 
and you can take a look at how I have this part set up. So I used two tools here. Uh, I used a quarter inch flat end mill and a half inch flat end mill. And I used the quarter inch for uh, to get in here and get a lot of the detail of these smaller pockets. Um, with a half inch, the dog bones would have all been overlapping and probably not the best move. Uh, same problem uh, over here uh, in some of these the detail in these finer corners and in these pockets. I wanted to use a smaller tool to be able to capture that. So it took a little longer to cut this overall profile, but um, you know, it's only making one of these, so I think it's okay. Uh, you can look and see what I did is I created, um, the first thing I do is I generate all of the pockets for these small ones. Then I go ahead and cut out the uh, all the through pockets. Then I cut out the left side and the right side. So if we look at some of these setups, um, these small pockets, basically just choosing a quarter inch flat end mill, um, setting our feeds and speeds, picking all of those pockets, setting up the depth. So again, we'll just go about half the cutter diameter uh, in depth for our stepping. And then another thing that you want to set is um, to just plunge. There's no reason to spiral in uh, when we're cutting here with wood with a shop with a CNC router. Um, then the other thing that's interesting here to take a look at is something like uh, on these profiles. So when I look at the skin, same thing, set the tool, set the feeds and speeds. Here on the geometry tab, one thing that I've added is uh, tabs. So you can see these dots right here represent um, places where I want to put a tab. So right there, there, there. Uh, by turning on tabs, I can set the size that I want. Um, these are maybe a little small, maybe go more like a 0 0.75, 0 0.18 to give a little thicker tab. And then again, same thing, setting passes, so setting multiple depths on the passes so that we don't try to do this all in one shot. And then also um, on linking, uh, we can pretty much take the defaults on a contour. It's not going to try to do a spiral in. So if we look at the result, you can see here uh, the number of passes that it's going to take with that little cutter. And then also we can see the result here of where it's going to create that tab. Uh, after we've done those four passes, uh, four operations I should say, then I'll come in with a half inch flat to do the rest of it because then we can just use a bigger cutter for all the rest of this, go a little faster, go a little deeper. Um, you can see the first thing I did is set up to cut out all of the planks. And same thing here, we're uh, setting all the feeds and speeds with the half inch tool this time, so we're going to go a little faster. Um, setting up tabs, so just putting two tabs on uh, on every side. And in this case, I didn't have to autom I didn't have to manually pick all the locations. I just give it um, a value. Say I want tabs every 10 inches, so none of the other sides are 10 inches, so it's going to just kind of work itself out um, nicely here and I end up with about, you just kind of play with the numbers, but I end up with two tabs on most of them, one, uh, sorry, four tabs on most of them and two on a couple of them, but it worked out just fine when I cut it out. You could manually have done that if you wanted some different result. Uh, then on passes here, I can set um, multiple depths, go a little deeper, half of the cutter diameter again. Another thing I want to point out uh, on all of the tool paths that I have created, I always use I always set this sideways compensation. We always want to go right conventional milling. Um, you can see a description here. Uh, climb milling, you know, while useful for, um, you know, a very rigid CNC machine when you're machining uh, metals and you're trying to get a really high tolerance, that's good. But I think when you're using a CNC router, it creates a lot of jerk. And um, I think really conventional milling is what you would more think of with uh, using a router. And so that's what you want to, <clears throat> that's what you're going to want to set. And by default in here, it's actually usually set to left climb milling. We want to go right conventional milling um, here in this setup. Again, that's really important and do that. I do that on all of my tool paths. And there we go. The final thing is to just do the same thing for these support pieces. Again, running a half inch cutter um, with a quarter inch depth and setting up all of the tabs. Again, you can see the tabs represented there in the toolpath. Another thing that's really nice to do when you're working on this is uh, you can actually select the entire uh, operations folder and then run a simulation. So I can simulate this. I can see all the toolpaths. Um, we can play these back. We can kind of watch what the cutter is going to do as it goes through. We can speed this up. Um, another nice thing to do is to turn on the stock so you can see 
the material as it's being removed. That's another nice feature. Um, you can also skip, so you can just say up, oh, just skip right to the next operation. You can see all the pockets being cut out, um, then watch the profile. And then sometimes just nice to just jump right to the end. And then here we can take a look at the final result. So if I just get myself oriented here, I can look at the final result. I can see the tabs, I can see if that looks good. I can see where I've cut with a half inch. Um, see if there's any like residual leftovers that I'm not expecting um, or anything like that uh, that I might not want. And then all the rest of this looks good. Um, so I'd be happy and I'd be ready to go ahead and post it out. So I would just hit post process. What I like to do is I like to set up two, I like to set up two setups like this for each tool. So one setup for each tool and then I'll select the setup folder, post process, select the shopbot post processor if that's what I'm cutting on and then hit OK and then I'll save it out as something like um, you know a chair quarter inch flat shop bot so I know which tool it is for which job I'm gonna run um, and then I'll do the same thing for this one and then when I go to run the that way when I go to run it I'll know that um, so you have a half inch flat shop bot so that way when I go to run it I know <laughs> which I know which NC file goes with which tool. I just set the tool, set up my zeros, and um, go ahead and cut it. You know, So you can see here in the setup is where I've defined uh, the, the zero for the stock. So in this case, I'm going off the top surface in the lower left-hand corner. Um, and uh, you just make sure that that is the same for both of them. And then when you go to actually set up and run, set your zero and uh, then you know finish the one set of job and then do the tool change and then run the second file. I find that to be really the easiest way to manage uh, multiple tools uh, when working with these uh, CNC routers.